You know what, man? For the longest time, I did not care at all about photos and looking good in photos. I always thought people who cared about that were a little bit too self-absorbed. But it was only until I went to set up my dating profiles where I realized I probably need to get some good photos because my current photos were all really terrible mirror selfie-esque pictures in like really bad quality quality and some random Instagram filter over it. It just looked really bad. I've got like awkward posing. I'm doing some like weird stuff with my face. If I was going to put myself out there for the beautiful women of England, I was going to need a change. I needed to learn how to take good photos. So I did what I do best. I watched YouTube videos <laughs> on how to take better photos. And I watched so many of them. And it started to really annoy me because honestly, every single one of these videos that I would watch. They all had one thing in common. You needed a friend who was going to take photos of you. And at this stage in my life, I had no in real life friends. And there was a big barrier of entry for asking my family to take pictures of me. It just felt too awkward. So watching these videos really annoyed me. And I was determined to figure out how to take good photos by myself. So I went onto Amazon and I bought myself a tripod which I could put my phone on. And when it arrived, it actually came with a little Bluetooth clicker that you could connect to your phone and when you click the button on the clicker it takes a photo which was amazing for me I was like holy crap and I didn't even know you could do this either my plan was to literally set a timer on my phone and just run into frame every time I was so excited I'd cracked the code finally I could take my own photos straight away I took my tripod and my clicker and I went over to my local park I wanted to try and practice taking some photos and see how they came came out. I am ready to get some awesome photos of myself. Here I go. I sit down on the grass. I take a photo. I go back to my phone and the photo sucked dick. Okay, fine. It happens. Maybe I'll try something else. Go back into position. Sit down. Take the photo. Go back. The photo shit. God damn it. I was starting to get very bored of going back and forth constantly, going to my tripod, going back into position, figuring out where I'm supposed to be in the frame. So I decided to just start batching the photos. I would sit, I would try different positions, different ways of looking around while taking loads of photos with my clicker. And when I went back to my phone to look at them, what I realized was 95 of them were absolute garbage. But the other five out of 100 photos were actually okay. They were maybe usable. Then I did some maths. If five out of 100 photos are good, maybe usable, that means one in 20 20 photos I take will be a decent photo. And that's when something clicked with me. If I wanted to take good photos of myself, I would have to go for volume. More photos, the better. When you look at paparazzi taking photos of celebrities, what do you see? Constant that's because they only need one of those hundreds of photos to come out good and usable. So they go for as many as possible. And it's the exact same when we're taking pictures of ourselves as well. We only need one of those photos to be good. That's it. The rest we can just put in the bin. So I took my five photos and I narrowed them down to two photos. I got rid of three of them because they were fairly similar. I did a bit of photo editing. I made the sky a bit bluer and then I uploaded them to my Instagram. And here are those photos. It's a good start, but there's some glaring issues here. My posing looks a little bit awkward. My face is scrunched up. It looks a bit strange and that's because the sun was in my eyes. And my physique doesn't really look very good with the clothes that I'm wearing. The clothes don't fit very well. And I just look a little bit, you know, skinny fat. But I did realize that my good side is when I'm looking over my left shoulder. We all have a good side for photos. You need to figure out what that is by taking photos and realizing what your good side is. So when in the future I go to take photos, I know that if I look over my left shoulder, I will look better than if I looked over my right shoulder. Some weeks later, I actually went out for a family meal. And this is when my sister actually took a few photos of me without me asking. And this was a very rare opportunity for me because I never get the opportunity for other people to take photos of me. I was so excited that I took any photo I could get and I uploaded it straight away. So happy, like, yes, finally, someone has taken some photos for me. But it 
it wouldn't be until a little bit later where I would realize that the picture just really wasn't that good. I looked a bit fruity. I was holding a very feminine drink. And I also just had a very sus mustache, you know, I needed a shave. This is when I learned another very valuable lesson, which is you don't have to use every single photo that you take. If you try to take some photos in an environment and they turn out bad, that's fine. Just don't use them. I felt the need to use this photo because it was so rare that I had the opportunity for someone else to take a picture for me. That was the wrong thing to do. And nowadays there's time and time again where I ask a friend to take a few photos of me and they just don't come out good. And that's totally fine. I just don't use them. It's completely normal. After some time, I went back to my volume hypothesis and I wanted to further practice taking more photos, more self portraits using my tripod and my clicker. But this time I did it in my room where I felt a bit more comfortable. I wasn't in public. There was no fear of someone watching me and thinking like, what the hell is that kid doing? And here I started to get a few more things right. I didn't move my face as much while taking photos. I just chose a specific sort of stoic masculine pose to keep my face in the same position rather than moving my mouth while I'm taking photos because that typically comes out very bad. I was taking the photos on my good side, but there was still a lot of room for improvement here. I was in some fruity poses for these photos, which doesn't really serve the purpose of the photos. I'm trying to look stoic and masculine and I just look a bit weird when I'm doing like this shit, right? It also just comes across a bit try hard as well. I wanted to look cool, not goofy. And I was also wearing some sweaty gym clothes, which doesn't read well on camera at all. So you know what? We'll try again. And this time I think I near enough nailed the self portrait. I put on my camera face. I shot from an angle which really complemented my jawline and my good side. I wore nice clean clothes. I cleaned my environment as well. And I didn't do some goofy try hard pose. I think I actually nailed this photo. This is a good photo. Finally, I thought. After months and months of getting no luck on Tinder, I had finally figured out how to take good photos of myself. I put it on Tinder. Okay, it's just a matter of time now. I would spend two hours a day swiping, 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 but my results remained fragmented. Sometimes I'd get a match and it's like, you know, I'd have a conversation with this girl, but it wouldn't be very high interest. And I still wasn't getting the female attention that I wanted from my photos. What the hell, man? What am I doing wrong here? I've spent all this time trying to figure out how to take good photos thinking I'd finally get the attention from the women which I craved and it wasn't the case. So then I decided to do an experiment. I started to think what did the other men's profiles look like on Tinder? Essentially the guys I'm competing with what were their photos looking like? So I made a Tinder account as a female and I looked at all the most popular men's profiles on Tinder and they all had one thing in common. They had pictures of them doing interesting shit. Not just good self-portraits, but they were doing shit. They were living their lives. My photos up until this point, while it might have been very valuable for me to master my angles and how to frame and like lighting and keeping tidy, hygiene, my clothes, my good side, all of them were just in my room. And this is when something clicked with me and I realized that good photos go beyond just looking good on camera. They actually paint a picture and the best photos and the types of photos that I wanted would paint a picture of me either being cool or living a fun life. And my current photos in my room were not cutting it. And this is when I realized if I wanted to get these sorts of photos, I would have to get friends. The YouTube tutorials turned out to be right all along because I'm not going to be able to carry my tripod with me everywhere I go and take clicker photos of me in the middle of the street, in a bar, in the gym, working out, whatever it may be. So here's what I did. I made a pack with one of my closest friends. We would both master taking photos of one another. And everywhere we went, whenever we saw an opportunity to get a good photo of each other, we would do exactly that. And this is when things got really exciting for me because I took everything I learned from my own self portraits, my angles, how I look good on camera, and I started to implement it in more exciting environments with other people too. It wasn't just me alone in every photo. Maybe I'm with friends, which helps 
paint me as a fun person rather than just some guy who sits alone in his room taking photos of himself. <laughs> this brings me to my new year photo. This is one of the first photos that I got my friend to take of me. It's a pretty okay picture, but there's a lot of room for improvement still. The quality of this photo is quite low because I had to actually zoom in because my friend took too much of my surrounding environment in the picture as well, and it added nothing to the picture. So I had to zoom it in, which actually degrades the quality of the photo. But I did make it a bit better by editing it, making it a bit more epic, adding some fireworks into the background, making the buildings pop a bit more. So it turned out to be an okay photo. And then there's these photos of me in London in the middle of a public street. Now these photos are cool because I actually got to get a bit creative with it as well. At the time I'd been suffering with really bad social anxiety and there's actually an anime which is based around a character who has social anxiety and they visually show this by having a blue cross over people's faces and at the end of the anime the blue crosses actually fall which signify that he's beaten his social anxiety and at this stage in my life I had just beaten my social anxiety as well so I actually took that theme from that anime and added it to these photos which I think turned out really cool thematically. But in the photos themselves I do look a bit awkward. I was still getting used to being in public around a lot of people and having my friend take pictures of me. There's a big barrier of entry to that. You don't want to feel like some sort of like weird celebrity right? But I found as time went on this got easier and easier and you come to realize that just taking cool photos is completely normal and no one's looking at you as if you're a weirdo for it. As I continued practicing I was taking good photos of my friends. My friends were taking good photos of me. The photos kept coming out better and better and better. I was getting much more comfortable on camera in public. I wouldn't feel weird about it anymore. And the barrier of entry to just taking good photos was getting lower and lower and lower. We'll be out. We might see a cool photo up. Oh, I might look cool next to this neon sign. Can you get a few pics of me? Boom, like that. Done. We were learning how to frame the photos better. We were learning to edit the photos to remove imperfections. Nothing crazy, but like, for example, if you have a big spot on your nose, which you don't usually have, you can just remove it. I'm not saying that you should alter how your face looks. You shouldn't give yourself a sharper jawline and like bigger cheekbones or whatever. But for me personally, if you have an imperfection going on, which isn't usually there, your best bet would be to just remove it from your photos because you want to put your best foot forward with your photos. Same shit if you have some dirt or debris on your shirt, just edit it, gone. You want to look your absolute best for your photos. So in my opinion, editing your photos to remove a spot or something which isn't usually there, which is very important, is fair game. We were learning about lighting, where to take the best photos, how to light them so you look really good. For example, taking photos during golden hour, which is when the sun is going down, produces amazing photos. We were learning all of this just through repetitions. Practice, practice, practice. And now my photos look more like this rather than this. Here's the main learning lessons for you summarized. Learn your camera face, learn your good side, look good and feel good. Get a haircut, shave, wear good fitting clothes. Edit your photos to remove imperfections, which aren't usually there and color grade your photos. Don't feel the need to use every photo just because you have it. Don't move your face or talk while you're taking photos. Don't do any try hard poses. Be out and about and paint a picture with your photos. Are you cool? Are you a fun person? Are you popular? All of your photos should paint a picture. Take awesome pics of your friends and have your friends do the same for you. And all of this is learned simply through volume. Take as many pictures as you possibly can because you only need one of them to look good. And finally, don't beat yourself up if you look bad in photos because that's just going to discourage you from learning how to look good. I promise you, I used to look like absolute shit in every photo I took and it's only through this practice where I learned how to actually look photogenic. You can repeat the steps I took and learn how to become photogenic too. If you want to learn how to make money online from the comfort of your home or traveling the world with your laptop, you can join over 500 of my students doing exactly that right now. And as you can see on the screen, we're getting excellent results inside of my academy. You could be next. Take care, boys.